I'm Robin Bennett, and I am one of the co-founders of The Dog Gurus. Susan Briggs is the other co-founder. So together, we um, co-own The Dog Gurus. We don't live in the same place, though. Susan's down in Texas. I'm in Colorado. Our entire company is virtual. We have staff and coaches all over the United States, so that's fun. But The Dog Gurus is a pet care business and a company for pet... <laughs> Pet Care Business Consulting and Staff Training Company. I can't talk today. We help pet care businesses launch, grow, and profit. So if you need help in any of those areas, we're happy to help you. What we're going to talk about today is marketing your pet care business. And this is a huge topic, but what we want to really focus on is ways that you can get out the message organically to the pet parents in your community. Because I think we see so many opportunities for pet care businesses to market themselves and let their pet parents and their community know how valuable, what the valuable services are that you're offering and how valuable what you, your knowledge is, but they don't take advantage of it. So we just, we've talked about this in the past. We want to just have a 30 minute session focused on it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I will let you kick it off with anything you want to start with, Susan. For this topic? I think a lot of it is never assume that what you're doing, everybody else does. You need to toot your own horn because if you don't, surely no one else is going to. Social media is a great place. You can do that and toot your own horn without it costing any money on your Instagram or Facebook pages, Twitter, TikTok. Some of the things that you think is routine are things you should be tooting your horn about, especially like as your staff complete training that you're doing, either it's first aid or if you do knowing dogs, um, pet guru college, any of the IBPSA courses, make sure that you take pictures, talk about it, have their certificate, because not everybody does that. You may think everybody trains their staff with those tools, but trust us, we sell these tools and not everybody that operates in a pet care business are using them. The same if you do go and travel to seminars, make sure you're talking about the sessions you're attending and why that's going to benefit the dog. So I think education and training is a big thing to toot your horn about, which is marketing um, in a way. And Robin is our marketing guru. So I'll let you take how they can capitalize on that and yes. make it marketing. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is exactly what Susan said. Most of the folks that we work with, so those of you that are on our YouTube channel or you're watching these Facebook lives or you're downloading resources that we have, most of you are the minority. <laughs> There's a whole millions and millions of other businesses out there, probably not millions, there's thousands of hundreds yeah. of thousands of pet care businesses in the United States. And we know the vast majority of those businesses are not getting educated, not even necessarily going through the proper business um, zoning and licensing. There's a lot of places that don't operate the correct way. There's businesses that don't really pay attention to safety. They just do whatever they feel comfortable doing and they don't get the education. They don't train the staff and which is horrendous, right? I'm sure if you're listening to me now, you're like, how can that be? I know. I agree. How can that be? But we all know that we just did a, Susan and I just did a webinar on this for pet parents about how to choose a pet care provider, because this is so important. This is a buyer beware industry. We all know that. But what that also means is what you guys would never, you would never dream of just opening and not training your team. You would never dream of not doing things legally for your county or state. You just wouldn't think about those. And you, it doesn't even dawn on you that you shouldn't go to a conference. So those things aren't normal though, for a lot of the people in the pet industry. So definitely take advantage of those everything you do you want to highlight that on social media you want to let and it doesn't have to be this huge um this huge post it can just be a picture of you you know standing in front of a conference sign or maybe you you're doing a video conference or a webinar you could just take a screenshot of a screen from the webinar and just post that on facebook hey my team's doing a lunch and learn today and we're learning about how to best care for the dogs that are coming to our facility, whatever it is, that's so easy to do, but it highlights the fact in a subtle way that you're doing something and maybe your competition isn't. So all of those things 
that have to do with educating your staff, whatever education process you're using, whatever lunch and learns you do. We've seen really good Facebook posts of a picture of a, the group of team members that are sitting around a table together and somebody's teaching them about first aid or they're doing a lunch and learn. Really great first aid photos. If you bring in a CPR, somebody to do CPR training for your staff, and now you can take a couple of pictures of your staff members working with the dog with the um, mannequins, the dog mannequins to learn CPR. Great post to share, and the and you want to make sure that your the folks that are using you or that are potentially finding you on whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever it is that you're posting that stuff out there. It's so easy to do. It then it takes zero dollars. It just takes somebody taking a picture or taking a quick video and posting that up there. The other thing I would say, we saw a lot of this happen right when COVID first started and it was out of sheer desperation of needing to get the word out, but I would make this a part of your routine business. So right when COVID started and everybody changed their cleaning protocols, everybody started doing more cleaning. They were wiping down things in between visits. They were you know, wiping down doorknobs and changing pens out or making sure that the dirty pens are separated from the clean pens, like all of that stuff. And a lot of people started doing um, drop-offs out outside, contactless drop-offs. And guess what? Tons of you started videotaping that to say, hey, here's our new process. Just wanted to let you know do that now. Like you don't necessarily have to show that it's a COVID protocol. Maybe it's something totally irrelevant. But my point is any kind of behind the scenes footage of anything your team is doing, you are going to think it's super boring, <laughs> but those things get a lot of engagement. So even video of, Hey, we're putting together the mop buckets for this morning and getting ready to take care of all these dogs. Like anything as simple as that. People love to see behind the scenes photos. Anytime that I'm doing any kind of webinar or whatever, I try to take a picture of my setup. Like I can't show you right now because I'm obviously doing this live, but I have a ring light in front of me. I have a light behind me. I'm down in my basement. My dog is laying, you know, at my feet. That's a really cute picture for someone to take of the whole setup. And then I can post that on social media going, Hey, went, went live with Susan today. So any of those types of fun behind the scenes photos or videos are really good to show as well. All right. What else, Susan, can you think of that they can easily post educate well, the pet parents too is important. Yeah. I think one thing that we forget is that especially people, if you're offering many different kinds of services that if your client comes to you for daycare, they think of you as their daycare place. If they come to you for dog training, they think of you doing dog training but they may not know you also do lodging or that you do grooming, bathing, even just nail trims. So I think on a repetitive basis, show your team from these different departments, show dogs enjoying, or at least not being miserable getting their nails trimmed <laughs> and keep that top of mind because some of you guys are busy that you're not bringing in new clients or you're capping numbers but you can still market to existing clients to produce that or increase the revenue per pet or ticket price for the people that are coming in. Some of you guys do really creative treats and meals, or you may have some cool new treats that have come in. Anything that you can do to share ideas of how people can spend more money with you when they are and maybe take advantage of other services is a great way to market to existing customers. And you're also serving them. It's not just to sell, but I can tell you, dogs have to have their nails trimmed. They need baths occasionally, even if they're not a groom dog. So these types of things, you're providing complete service. And right now when it's getting colder, people are busy. They don't want to necessarily do that themselves. You can save them time. Yeah. My dogs needed his nails cut for four weeks. Every day I go, I got to cut his nails today. <laughs> and he's actually easy. It's not like he's a problem. I can cut his nails in three minutes, but I just am like, I got too much to do. And then I forget. And then it's the end of the day. And then I'm like, tomorrow I got to cut his nails. I've been saying that for four weeks tonight. Yeah. I'm going to cut his nails tonight, but I would love to just be able to go someplace and be like, Hey, I'll be back cut his nails while I'm gone because it does. It's a busy time of year. My dog also needs a bath before we have company come over. So that's another one. So if I could just drop him off, get the bath, get his, but people don't always re realize that you are offering all those services. I will never forget. I had someone come into my daycare. I started my company as a trainer. So I was a trainer um, for about four years before doing in-home training lessons. 
And then I got a facility because I wanted people to come to me for training. I got tired of living in my car. And once I got that facility is when I also added daycare. So now I had daycare for two years. I've been now training for six years. This was a long time ago. I'll never forget the day someone walked in, a daycare client walked into my daycare and said, now li listen, I've been training six years. So this is like, this just hurt my feelings. But anyway, then <laughs> been doing daycare for two, training for six. This daycare client walks in and goes, I just signed up Fifi for this training class. Like she said that to my face, like it wasn't hurtful. And then I realized I was like, oh, because that felt really rude that she just said that to me when I offer training. And so I said something along the lines of, that was nice. I didn't say anything snarky. I was just, oh, that's great. We have training here. <laughs> She had no idea. I, and I was, of course, how can you have no idea that I do training? Especially since that's what I had done the most of. It was really weird. But when I used to market, because I didn't have this never ending pot of money to market, I did tend to market for, I would like alternate for a period of time. I would only market daycare. And then for a period of time, I would only market training. And I wasn't very, like in hindsight, I wasn't very tactical about how I did that. And so you could go for, I could go for a couple months and I might never have marketed my training at all because I was like, oh, training's doing well. I don't need to spend any money there. But then the result is that I had certain clients that didn't know I had the other service available at all. So just think if you have day, and I only had two services, I had daycare and had training. So just yeah. think if you have daycare training, grooming, po possibly things like pet sitting or dog walking. You might have photography services. Like there's a whole bunch of other things you might have. You have to constantly be top of mind and make sure that people know you offer those other services. The good news is that person did come to my training classes. <laughs> okay. See, that's the moral of the story. You have to tell people and let them know what you do. And right now you may be focused that the holidays are here and you're busy and you don't need new business, but we know from a experience that a lot of pet care centers once new year's day comes and those lodging dogs go home that january and february can be slow um, especially for lodging so if you need to make up revenue from lodging then now is the time to think about what could you be promoting in january and february from your other services or create something some new bundles or packages Now's the time to get those created so that you're ready to go out with them right after the new year and lodging dips down. Yeah. And I will say this is a pet peeve of mine and Susan's. You did a much better job of not being irritated about it. <laughs> but I, I do get frustrated with in our industry every single year. We I just heard this two days ago. Every single year people are like, we do so well. Thanksgiving is great. Christmas is great. And then January. It's just a slow time. Everybody just says that. Everybody in our industry is just, if you do daycare and boarding, you're like, we're not going to make any money in January. That I want to rip my hair out, honestly, because we yeah. know that if we know that, if January is going to be slow and 90% of the time, if you're doing daycare and training, the boarding is going to stop right after Christmas. So it is slow. But if we know that, let's plan for it. So what are you doing right now? What are your plans? For, hopefully you have some. What are your plans to do something in January to generate some additional revenue so that you're not just saying, oh, January numbers are going to really be horrible. Now, if you just want to, if you don't mind that January is not busy, maybe you take like time off so that you can all go on vacation, then that's great. That's your plan. But if you're going to bemoan the fact that you don't have enough money in January, then I would be saying, let's make sure that you're building something in to generate revenue in January. So a few ideas. January, I used to do more parties than other months of the year for my daycare dogs, especially because I could bring dogs that wouldn't necessarily come to daycare would come for a party. So planning more parties or more events or activities is a really good way. January might also be a great time to do the night out for the pet parents who have been mm -hmm. like running around like crazy and having all of their hectic December period. And now you can offer like movie night. We'll keep your dog. You guys go to the movie. We talked a lot about those kinds of activities for COVID where what can you do to bring, to get a client to come in and board their dog overnight with you, give them an incentive. So the incentive might be, Hey, you had a stressful holiday and making food and presents and family and all that. So why don't you just take 
a day off and we'll keep your dog and you can go after Christmas shopping or go to the movies or wherever, depending on what your state is letting you guys do right now. But that's another really good idea to generate more revenue. Any kind of activity that brings the dogs in, you could do winter part, winter pictures. So a lot of people like to do the holiday Christmas pictures with Santa, or I just saw dog tired and South Carolina was doing it with the Grinch, which was really cool. But you could also do some kind of photo opportunity wintery, maybe in January, or get ready for the Super Bowl, pre-Super Bowl stuff. So then things can, could work for generating revenue. I have an idea. Program we launched, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, Trick of the Month. Trick we of the Month. Trick of the Month. Yeah. Tell them the month. That's a really good one. I didn't think of that. Yeah. So if you don't have trick of the, we have a program that we collaborated with blue nine pet products to put together. Trick of the month is something you get for your business. And it's like $199. It's one, one time fee. You get a year's access. Actually you get 15 months of tricks and the videos, your staff watches the videos so that anyone, it does not have to be a trainer. That's the beauty of trick of the month. You do not have to have a trainer on your staff. You get the trick of the month program each month. There's a set of videos that your team can watch so that they know how to teach the tricks. And then you charge um, an up, you either upsell this. Some people have it as a membership, but you're adding an additional charge to the daycare dog, the daycare dogs visit, and they have to come more than once. You need them to come a couple of times so that you can teach that month's trick. And so you're generating daycare revenue, plus you're generating an upsell for the trick. And then you are teaching the dog the trick and it's a relatively easy trick to teach. And then the owner gets taught how to do that trick with their dog once the dog knows it, which is after a few visits. So that's a really good one too. And that trick of the month is available. If you don't know how to teach those tricks, that's what the trick of the month um, product does. It gives you those videos to help you teach it and help your team teach it. But any, if you've got any of your staff members who are interested in getting involved with dog training, it's a really good way to get them started and see how well they do working with those, those pets. Yeah. That's a really good one as well. So anything. You know, think about if you just have 20 dogs that come to your daycare per week, paying you $25 more to learn a trick, how much revenue would that be? I may have to get out my calculator and actually. That's a pretty decent calculator. amount of revenue though. And that's a pretty small number too. Yeah. 20 a week. So what do you want me to say? How many a week? Do, do, well do 10 and $25. And then how much okay. is that a month? That's 250. And if you did that every week, four weeks, that's a thousand dollars. Yeah. Right there. So and that's... so you already paid for your 199 investment and made 800 and you've got, 14 more months of tricks that you can do. Exactly. So, yeah, that's a really good way. opportunity. Um, the other thing I was going to say, and we always tell pet care facilities a lot of times don't realize or take it for granted, I guess I should say. They take it for granted how much that is really more than the average pet parent. Because, and here's how why I say that. I'm a dog trainer. So a lot of times when I tell somebody who's not a dog trainer in a pet care facility, oh, you should talk to pet parents about X, Y, Z. They'll go, oh, I'm not a trainer. And it usually it's something easy like house training, let's say. Most of you or and your staff would be able to do a 10 minute video or a 10 minute discussion with a pet parent on how to house train a puppy. I can guarantee you, it's not that hard. You do not need to be a certified professional dog trainer to help someone understand how to house train their puppy. And if you really don't know, a quick video internet search will teach you everything you need to know. And so I think a lot of times we don't take advantage of those, that knowledge that we already have because we feel like it's an imposter syndrome. Like I'm not going to talk about that because I don't really know. You do know a whole lot more than the average pet parent. And that knowledge is great to share with them. And so my other idea for marketing your own business is make yourself the duty expert. So doing a quick video on your Facebook page, you could jump on live or if that's scary, because I know it is for a lot of people, you can also just videotape it with your iPhone and then upload it to Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, wherever you want. So it doesn't have to be live if you don't want, if that's too scary for you. But I can tell you that iPhone and Android phones, this is all Susan and I, right now I'm using my computer. But normally when we do videos, we're just using our computer, our um, phones, because they do really good video. 
but you could do a quick right now you could do a quick video on five ways to five things you should do when you bring your puppy home because a lot of people are going to get puppies at christmas you could do five poisonous christmas plants really if you don't know what they are just go google it it's not hard <laughs> it's like poinsettia is the number one poinsettia mistletoe and holly all three of those are poisonous to dogs did you know that there you go you could just all you have to do is a 30 second thing going hey it's the holidays Make sure you're keeping these plants away from your pets because they're poisonous. You could do poisonous holiday foods. Like we all are on Facebook seeing these infographics that come across. You could do something on cold weather or hot weather, if depending on where you live, but something on weather safety for whatever time of year. And these videos, they don't even have to be you. They could be your team members. They could be anybody that you have. It could be someone that you bring on just for this role. But most of the time I would say, just ask one of your team members who are comfortable doing these kind of videos. Generally, it's going to be like one of your younger team members that love technology, love being on social media. See if they're comfortable getting in front of camera and just doing that. Because, or, oh, go ahead, Susan. I was going to say, or if you're not comfortable, model what we do. Because sometimes it's easier to talk to somebody else and do it like the interview format. And they can be shorter than what we're doing. But it's sometimes it's easier to ask someone else the question or have somebody ask you the question and then you respond. Yeah. So you, you can jump on zoom now has an ability to broadcast zoom to Facebook live. I mean, they've had it for a while since COVID we're on something called be live, but you could just go, you could just put your camera up and have the reason that Susan and I have to do it. We are not in the same place. So right. we have to have something that can broadcast Susan from, Texas while I'm broadcasting from Colorado, which is what we're doing right now. But if we were together, we would just set the phone in front of us and then we'd sit really close to each other. <laughs> if you get really close. Um, and then you could have this, do the same thing. But it, it, I will say it's a lot easier to do Q and A back and forth where we banter back and forth. But again, we're doing Facebook lives for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. It does not have to be that long. Like I would definitely say, five, three, two, three minutes is really good. So just jump on there. And sometimes I don't even necessarily plan them out. Like after this, after we hang out from this, Susan and I are going to do a couple quick videos. And then after that, I'm probably going to do a quick Instagram just because I'm standing here already. So I might as well take advantage of it. But you have a lot of that knowledge. And the thing about video and we, Susan and I are both in a program called Video Attraction Lab which is where we've learned how to be better on video. And it is a skill that you get better at the more you do it. And, but it's also a skill that is, if you're in the, if you're one of those people that likes to learn, it's also a skill that is very learnable. Is that a word? It's, you can learn it really easily. You have to be willing to learn, but video attraction lab, which is a membership we are in. And if you have somebody that's really interested in this, we can give you an information on video attraction lab because it's an awesome program. Susan and I are both in it, but they've taught us a lot of scripts. They've given us a lot of information on like how to position the camera and what, you know, tools to use and that kind of thing. But it, you do get better at it. But one of the things they teach in there is that the more people know you, the more they're going to do business with you. We all know that from a marketing standpoint, they get to know you better on camera that it's, I have people now that will call me and they act like they like we're best friends. And it's because we've basically talked together so much that I feel like I know them and they feel like they know me. And it's just all been through camera. Samantha, who I don't know if Samantha's on right now, Samantha's in that category. I've actually never met Samantha, but I feel like I know her, but um, be, she's listened to us a lot on Facebook. And so we've gotten to know each other that way. So video is a huge game changer in how you come across to your clients, especially in a business like pet care, where it is all about relationships. So you yeah. can build your relationship with your client just by jumping on video and giving like the top three poisonous plant tips or, and just make it a habit to say, okay, twice a month, I would great if you could do it once a week, that's even better. But let's just start with twice a month. You're going to just jump on camera and say something to anyone who's on your Facebook page. It's, or you can send it to in an email. Like it doesn't matter how the word gets out. I would say Facebook is just an, if Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok are probably the three most common ways right now in terms of marketing. And again, it doesn't really cost you any money. So it talks a little bit of time, but that's it. Yeah. And if you wanted to record them in advance, you could do batch two or three at a time, and then you would have a month or two done. 
Yeah. And that we do that a lot too. So sometimes Susan, sometimes I'll just be like, these are the five videos. I'm just going to go downstairs and record all of them, but they won't get released for the next several weeks. So you could literally, and I've done this with Instagram before I'll do seven, 15 second Instagram posts, and then I'll just put them in a folder and I can use them whenever. So that's a really good tip too, as well. So Barbara said, love the pet parent night out already have a name winter wonderland weekend. Oh, that is awesome. That's a great yes. name. And yeah. you can combine that with pictures. Cause okay. So I did these pictures. I haven't shown them on Facebook yet, but okay. Talk for a second, Susan, I got to find this picture. All right. Here's my phone real quick. So if you have any questions, post them and we're going to wrap this up. But again, Put the fun in, make it memorable. Like Winter Wonderland weekend is very memorable. I would love that. You can do the whole hot chocolate, cozy fire, even if it's not real and you wouldn't give dogs hot chocolate, but you could do something that would be safe for dogs and but play up the emotion and the comfort for the dogs, just like you would if it was for your kids. So you can show your picture. Yeah. So this is my picture of, let me see if this. See, look, oh, that's adorable. look how cute my dog is um, oh. with his buddy, the elf costume. So um, I'm channeling my inner Debbie Oliver because Debbie Oliver okay. is a good friend of ours. And she always takes the most amazing mm -hmm. pictures in her pet care facility. She owns um, Miss Daisy's out in Texas. And she always gets these just wonderful backdrops. And anyway, so I my sister-in-law got a dog and she did, she got a Halloween backdrop. And I was like, I hadn't thought, I'd never thought about doing it like personally in my house it's yeah. in it at pet care facilities. But then my sister-in-law, Kathy, she was like, that backdrop was like $15. And I was like, really? So I went on Amazon and sure yeah. enough, this one, I bought this one. So now we're taking turns buying them for our own dogs. But this one, it's that, whoop, let me see. So it's that gingerbread yeah. trees in the snow it was like $12. And it's a pretty big backdrop. And I just had it hung up, taped it on the wall, let it drape down. And then I had a couple of, I actually had my climb. That's Rangers sitting on the red climb in that picture, which is stacked up oh, there. Yeah. But those, it's not, it doesn't cost that much money. And Debbie Oliver is like the master at this. If you go to her um, Facebook page, you'll see all kinds of amazing photos from years, from all the years she's been doing it. But those kinds of pictures are great. And you can charge a little bit more because you're going to get some kind of photo opportunity. And this is another reason we like using the climbs in your facility. Cause if you have taught your dogs to get on the climbs, it makes the picture taking really easy. So having your dog, having Ranger jump on the climb, he doesn't care what's behind him. He's just, Oh, I'm on the climb. Cause it's something he does every single time we're doing training or whatever, since he was a puppy. So it's a really good, any kind of object that your dogs are used to getting on in your pet care facility, just have them get on that. So it makes picture taking really easy. But the, so the, I would say the last thing is just making sure you're educating your pet parents to whatever you can think of. So do behind the scenes of what your pet care facility looks like, do highlighting the education you're giving your pet care staff and team and what you do to make sure that you have the safest, cleanest, most effective, most efficient operation and why the dogs love it there. And then obviously videos and pictures of the dogs having fun, which is, that's probably the one thing that everybody does do. But Susan also a long time ago did some research and found that having human beings in those photos yeah. is really important too. So do you want to talk real quick about that, Susan? Yeah, absolutely. We're trained to tension and focus on images that have people in them. So it's great to have a lot of dog or cat pictures, but the best ones that will get the most attention are if you have staff members interacting with the pets and you want the body language for staff to be happy and fun as well as the pets. And those will get more attention and engagement than just dogs alone. Yeah. Have people in there too. Plus it shows that your team really cares and they enjoy engaging with pets, which is what pet parents want. They want to leave their pet with someone that really enjoys and will engage with them while they're there. Yeah. So it's and I think we just tend to never want the people in the pictures, but it really does make a difference to have those people in there, partly just from the relationship building standpoint, but also partly from the psychology of what our brains do when we see humans and dogs together and where our eye is attracted to the person there too. So don't discount that people should be in some of your photos too. And then the last thing I'll say regarding education for the pet parent, 
So Susan and I, for many years, especially since COVID, have been recommending that pet care facilities could generate more revenue by offering some kind of a pet parent membership that's online, that's a recurring subscription. And many people have gone to, because um, we also would recommend membership programs in general, whether a grooming membership or a daycare membership or a training membership, we've talked a lot. And if you haven't seen any of those talks, you can go back to our YouTube channel and see some of the Facebook lives we've done on generating revenue through memberships. But memberships are a big deal because you can get loyalty and you can get recurring clients and you can get recurring revenue that way. But we also recommended doing some kind of an online um, program where you're providing content monthly to help pet parents learn more about their dogs with all the knowledge that you guys have. But we also know that most people haven't done that because <laughs> there's a whole time factor. So we have a plan to help you with this, which is going to be rolling out this month. We're actually going to be rolling out a membership program called Roughly Speaking through the dog gurus. And Roughly Speaking is for the pet parents. And it is going to be monthly content provided to pet parents to help them build their bond with their pet, learn about products and resources that we would recommend so that they can hopefully save their money and spend their money in the products that are proven and tested and that we know about that are made well and that kind of thing, products as well as other services, helping them find a pet care facility, which will actually help you because we are going to be teaching them all the things that we would say to look for in a good pet care provider, which is hopefully what you guys are all doing. So they're going to hopefully go, oh, that's what my daycare does. So I'm going to a great place. And then just activities they can do with their dogs, enrichment activities, just all of those kinds of things that help a pet parent build a stronger bond with their pets. So we are going to roll this out for pet parents next week. And so you might start seeing some stuff about roughly speaking, but we are going to then talk to pet care facilities who might want to offer this as an add-on to what you're already doing. So in other words, you could actually become an affiliate to promote roughly speaking to your clients and generate revenue yourself because we would split the revenue um, between the dog gurus and us if you did that. We just talked to somebody yesterday or the day before who said, oh, we were talking about roughly speaking. And that person said, I just want to add that as part of my membership. I wanted to raise my prices in my membership anyway. That just gives me an extra way to raise my price. And so I was like, oh, so that's another opportunity is if you are looking at other things you can add as value added options to increase prices, this is another opportunity for that. And we do all the work. You are basically just providing the opportunity for that person to join the membership and then you can benefit through revenue generated as well. So all that's coming out that hopefully will help you as well to help educate pet parents, make them better pet owners, make them better advocates for the dogs, which is really for us what it's all about so that we can make lives better for dogs as well. Anything else that you want to say about that, Susan? No, we were all over the place, but it is all marketing <laughs> because <laughs> what marketing is sharing your story and getting more revenue and better service out to your clients and pets. And this is all organic stuff that doesn't cost money. It cost some time, but that's worth it. And I think today's in today's world, that bond that you and your team have with the dogs is really important. And you want to make sure you're capitalizing on that and videos and pictures are the best way to do that. So I just have to share Holly's statement. I don't know if you can read all of it on the screen, but she said she currently uploaded pets from the holiday photos to make a Facebook post. We have this one regular daycare pup on staff members, on a staff member's lap kissing her chin. The owner cried tears of happiness that we treat her pup like one of her own, which is that's exactly what it's all about. Because we've done surveys before and you can go out and look at, you can Google what people's fears are in leaving their dogs in a pet care facility. Believe me, Susan and I have talked to enough pet parents as well as business owners. People are afraid to leave their dogs. And believe me, when we get stories, I just we just got a story across our desk the other day about a dog that was killed in a daycare because something happened that shouldn't have happened. And the dog got out and ended up in the wrong place. We've seen incidents where there have been dogs injured. Like people hear those stories and then they get scared about leaving their dog. Most people, when we did our survey, most people think of a kennel or a pet care facility as a jail. And which is why you want to make sure that you, uh, that your pet parents understand that you have comfortable furnishings and safe play areas and that your staff is totally engaging with the dogs. It's why enrichment is so big. 
because they want that one-on-one -on -one attention and they want to see their dogs having fun because I, my son took care of my dog one time and I went out of town and then I was like so irritated that he never sent me pictures. <laughs> now I know my son loves my dog, but I still was like, I need pictures of my dog. So I know my dog's okay. And so I texted him. I'm like, send me pictures. And so then he did. And it was all great, but it's weird how I wanted the picture. I wanted the picture. Don't just tell me my dog's okay. I want the picture or video is even better. So your pet parents are like that. And especially when they're first coming to you and they don't know you and they haven't built that trust. So the more you can do the build that relationship, the better. And you want to show the dogs because the dogs are having fun. If you're running a really good pet care facility, the dogs are happy to be there. And that's what you want to make sure your clients know. And you, they, you want to make sure that they understand that you're bringing all that education and value because you truly understand dogs and you can help make their dog have a really good stay while they're on vacation or shopping or whatever they're doing. So yeah, it is all marketing. And I think that's really important just to remember because marketing doesn't have to be this complicated, stressful thing. It can just be all about Let's make sure that pet parents know what we're doing and that what we're doing is safe and fun and happy for the dogs and the dogs are enjoying it. Oh, absolutely. Be authentic. Just be you. Exactly. And we are going to help you do that with Roughly Speaking. So look out for more information on that.